It's a regular conference. City Council has incorporated the annual meetings notice of 2014, which was filed in the City Clerk's Office and posted on the Bulletin Board on December 27, 2013. Sent to the Star Ledger, Home News Tribune, all the compliance with provisions of the Open Code of Chinese Law of New Jersey. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Perkins Augusti. Councilman Cuesta. Here. Councilman Torres. Here. Councilman Gonzalez. Here. Councilman Keenan. Here. Councilman Sedeno. Here. Councilman Gorman. Here. Councilman Mazza. Here. President Corbin. Here. 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 Ready at this point, is there any member of the public that wishes to address City Council? Seeing none, I'll close that portion of the meeting. We're going to, at this point, move into closed session to talk about the uh, litigation. Also, uh, by Councilwoman Patricia Perkins, Augusti, seconded by myself. Roll call, please. Okay. i got to read my little thing. Go ahead. Whereas the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the governing body wishes to discuss the matter falling within the attorney-client privilege, minutes will be kept and once the matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires that confidentiality, then the minutes can be made public. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the public be excluded <coughs> from this meeting. Councilwoman Perkins Augusti? Aye. Councilman Cuesta? Aye. Councilman Torres? Aye. Councilman Gonzalez? Aye. Councilman Keenan? Aye. Councilman Sedeno? Aye. Councilman Gallman? Aye. Councilman Mazza? Aye. President? <laughs> Aye. Okay. All right, uh, before we begin, uh, mm. Yolanda, have we heard anything from PSEG? No. Mm. So we'll reach out to them again. Okay. I got a we got a bunch of stuff to all the council members have been doing their job out there and making lists and leading them here. Okay, let's start. All right. Letter dated April 29, 2014, from His Honor the Mayor. Subject to the confirmation of your honorable body, I herewith make the following appointments to the Board of Adjustment. I herewith appoint Commissioner Elizabeth Cano to serve as a member of the Board of Adjustment, alternate number one, to fill the unexpired term of Commissioner Reverend Dr. Larry Dixon, who has recently resigned. I herewith appoint Commissioner Orlando P. Galvez to serve as a member of the Board of Adjustment, alternate number two, to fill the unexpired term of Commissioner Elizabeth Cano, who was recently promoted to alternate number one. I herewith appoint Commissioner Charles R. Bathalis to serve as a member of the Board of Adjustment, alternate number three, to fill the unexpired term of Commissioner Orlando P. Galvez, who was recently promoted to alternate number two. I herewith appoint Mr. Ricardo Sosa to serve as a member of the Board of Adjustment, alternate number four, to fill the unexpired term of Commissioner Charles R. Bathalis, who was recently promoted to alternate number three. President? Yes, sir. I just wanted to say that uh, it's been a while since I've seen um, at the same time, because we have appointed uh, great individuals in the past, and I'm sure we'll continue to do so. But these four individuals between us, I think, are truly uh, exceptional. And I'm happy that uh, we are getting this uh, recommendation from me. Thank you. Good <coughs> Letter dated April 30, 2014, from the business administrator requesting that your honorable body consider authorizing a renewal of a voluntary long-term disability program through Lincoln Financial Group, Omaha, Nebraska, for the period May 1, 2014 to May 1, 2017, at no cost to the City of Elizabeth. It's an employee voluntary payroll deduction program. Letter dated April 30, 2014, from the business administrator, requesting that your honorable body consider authorizing a renewal of American Family Life Assurance Company, Albany, New York, to make available to all city employees personal accident indemnity and personal short-term disability income protection insurance for the period May 10, 2014 to May 10, 2017 at no cost to the City of Elizabeth Employee Voluntary Payroll Deduction Program. 
Put it on. Letter dated April 30, 2014, from the Business Administrator requesting that your honorable body consider authorizing a renewal of MetLife Resources, Fairfield, New Jersey, to make available to all city employees certain tax and retirement benefits of a deferred compensation plan for the period May 25, 2014 to May 24, 2017 at no additional administrative cost other than incidental expenses of collecting and dispersing the employee's deferral and for any annual audit required by state or federal government. Letter dated April 30, 2014 from the business administrator. Recommending awarding a contract to Highway Service Corporation Elizabeth for police authorized towing and storage services for a third year for a period of one year commencing June 12, 2014 through June 11, 2015 under the same terms and conditions as the current contract. Any questions? Put it on. Letter dated May 1, 2014 from the Business Administrator requesting that your honorable body consider authorizing the donation or sale of the fire safety house trailer to Kenilworth Fire Department in the amount of $1. Why are we doing that? Uh, we have a new trailer that we received through grant funding and um, <clears throat> we're selling this to Kenilworth for a dollar. They're going to refurbish it and use it. Uh, Bridget, can you do me a favor? Sure. Can you make sure maintenance takes a look at this chair? I just realized it. that's a chair. Okay. Um, maybe they could put that little plastic protector. These are brand new chairs, and it, it's ruined because it hits the side of the table. Gotcha. You still have your chairs in there. And they are a part of the uh, shared service. I want you to sell it. It is a <laughs> Letter dated May 2nd, 2014 from the Business Administrator requesting to amend a resolution dated December 18, 2012 authorizing the award of contract to Motorola Solutions, Inc. to provide communications equipment for the first responders of the City of Elizabeth under the Motorola Trumped Radio System upgrade, specifically to include the new Motorola Solutions, Inc. state contract number 83909 which is set to expire in 2018. Letter dated May 1, 2014 from the business administrator recommending awarding a contract to 454 Morris Avenue Inc. doing business as Tropicana Diner and Restaurant Elizabeth for prisoners meals for the period of two years commencing May 25th, 2014 through May 24th, 2016 in an amount not to exceed $150,000. What is this? How do we pick somebody? Uh, we uh, solicit bids. Yeah. Can we rebid this again, Mr. President? Because uh, I was looking at the, uh, it was actually advertised on the website of the city with I think only seven days. And uh, maybe uh, if you were advertising in a star ledge, you might probably get a uh, better response. And of course, it's a two years contract. I'm sure there's a lot of diners or all the restaurants in Elizabeth that would like probably to bid and the up might be equal or better food. Council? Well, it was on the website for 10 days, uh, which is the legal requirement that we have. So it was up for 10 days. On the website? On the website. Not, yes. not anymore on a star ledger? <laughs> Well, what happens if, if, uh, if I don't have access uh, to a website and I, uh, and I'm old-fashioned that I believe in reading in a newspaper? Um, it's an attempt to uh, to save money and curtail the administration's expenses because we are able to put it up on the website at no cost to us. Um, but it's your honorable body's That's, That's what I mean. So I I don't think we. What's what's the what is the rule though? Are we supposed to advertise in Australia? Mm. Out of a sudden, Mr. President, we shift from the traditional way of advertising to the people of Elizabeth into some kind of a new. No, I know. Uh, 
And it's actually, this is, uh, according to state statute, it's exempt from bidding. This is a choice. Is? Yes. So certain, yes, according to statute 40A-11, it's, it's exempt from bidding. Um, so we do, we did it through an open and fair process, uh, but we did adhere to all but laws. Why are you so defensive and don't allow them to say, it might be you're rebidding again and you might get a, a lower price and you might get more people to participate? Oh, I'm for, certainly not offended or no, getting, I'm saying, I mean, I don't really personally care who feeds the prisoners, right. honestly, yeah. um, but <laughs> it's just as a matter of, of expediting it, right. the contract, but again, it's, it's your, it's your honorable body's decision and I would And why do we do for two years, Mr. President, instead of on a yearly basis, so it might be we give a chance to somebody else to Don't know the answer to that question. Well, can we get the answer, please? Meanwhile, can you all down if you don't get an answer? I mean, again, I think the reason we bid it for two years is to lock in a lower price that we can guarantee as opposed to as market conditions change. Mm. And last year, the price was a little bit lower than it was this year, if I'm not mistaken, and I was given to somebody else, if I'm not mistaken. Who did you give last year? Who received the bid? And how much it was, please? Uh, my understanding is that it has been to the Tropicana Diner. I can certainly get you that information. Mm -hmm. And it would have been two years ago. So, yes, it would make sense that it was probably lower because of Increases in economic and, conditions. And, and it was given to the Tropicana. Also. I know they've been doing it for a while. Yeah, they've been for a while. I thought it yeah, was uh, a they, uh, Maple Avenue Diner they were doing once. Yeah. Olympia sure. had it at Olympia one point. Olympia, Olympia had it at one point in time. They did it some time ago. Probably right yeah. yeah. But then they chose not to uh, yeah. participate. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. The majority feels like to have a, at least I have some points that I no, no, Councilman, Mr. I, President I, I should be honored because you. you know what? But uh, uh, but I do want to make sure that the rest of the council is willing to hold this thing up. Yeah, just be, just before well, Mr. President. He he wants to get on it. Oh. I have a question. This is the first time, you know, and I'm a new guy. Why do we feed the president? Why don't we take prisoners? What? Yeah. Come on. You got it. Jeez. What? It's all requirement. Jeez. That's all requirement. You want to take They're they're it's entitled unconstitutional. They're entitled to three square meals a day. Yeah. So yeah. They don't cook that inside. No, no, no. <laughs> We're talking about the municipal police. Okay. okay. This is the municipal jail, which. Oh, so let's see prison. I'm like, why do we? Oh, you think it's prison? No, no. Oh. No, you're not. This is jail next time. Yeah. Okay. Then you're right. It should be jail. I've been in jail. Yes, sir. Frank, with all due respect, yeah. 875 Shh. Dial, uh, 875 per person per day, three meals. Yeah, cup, of coffee, cup of coffee is three bucks. You're I mean, right. Even you're if right. you rebid it, you're not likely to get much. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. so. I didn't click pretend to three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's, 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 that's your price, Frank. Mr. President, I'll take everything back. Okay. <laughs> 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 and that was a lot. Yeah. Just wasted uh, 10 minutes of my time. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was cool. Move you. on. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> now you can't talk for us or me. That's it. <laughs> 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 Let it be. Take this administrator recommending awarding the contract to Garden State Highway Products, Mineland, New Jersey, for aluminum side blanks for the Public Works Department for the period of May 1, 2014 through April 30, 2016 at a cost not to exceed $75,000. Mm -hmm. Letter dated May 5, 2014 from the Business Administrator, recommending awarding a contract to Garden State Highway Products, Maryland, New Jersey, for reflective sheeting for the Public Works Department for the period May 1, 2014 through April 30, 2015, at a cost not to exceed $75,000. I'm just glad we have water on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Letter dated May 5th, 2014 from the Business Administrator recommending awarding a contract to ESI Equipment for Sham, Pennsylvania for the purchase of police and homeland security equipment and supplies for the period May 1, 2014 through April 30, 2015 at a cost not to exceed $40,000. Letter dated May 6th. 2014 from the business administrator recommending awarding a contract to TNM Associates Middletown New Jersey to serve as the city's engineering consultant under the energy efficiency and conservation block grant to prepare and issue technical bid specifications and to serve as the city's project manager through project completion for the period of May 1, 2014 through April 30, 2015, it will cost not to exceed $290,000 unless further authorized by your honorable body. Bridget, we got a grant for this, don't we? Correct. 
this is a this, this is grant funded and attached to uh, your document is all the work that is uh, being proposed and that will be managed. Okay. Just for the no. tax dollars are no tax dollars. Right. No property tax dollars. <laughs> Letter dated May 6, 2014 from the Business Administrator recommending awarding contracts to Mark Siegert, Ph.D., Milburn, New Jersey, and Betty C. McClendon, <clears throat> Comprehensive Psychological Services, PA, Roward and Rue, Clark, New Jersey, to serve as police psychiatrist, psychologist, to conduct hiring evaluations and fitness for duty examinations and conducting other necessary evaluations on an as-needed basis for the period May 1, 2014 to April 30, 2015 at a total cost not to exceed $30,000 per doctor unless further authorized by your honorable body. Letter dated May 6, 2014 from the Business Administrator recommending awarding a contract to Stanley J. Real Estate Appraisal Consultants, Colonia, New Jersey at an appraisal cost of no more than $10,000 plus per diem cost of $175 per hour for conferences, rebuttal appraisals, updates, and testimony, if necessary, not to exceed $25,000 in connection with the appraisal of 601 Bond Street for the period May 1, 2014 to April 30, 2015. We're going to acquire this property? Yes, we're going to acquire this property for a flood control project. Actually going to store Which one? 601 Bond Street. That's, <coughs> that's the uh, Lions Den, Den, the bar there. They might talk about uh, uh, fixing that uh, flood condition. Right, right. Uh, about uh, 6 in, in Trump Street. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the area right there. They're going to put, we're going to put in a million, ga a million gallon holding tank. Detention right. basin. Detention right. basin. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. It's going to be something that that uh, should hopefully resolve that. Councilman, yes. it will. Uh, it's some similar, some similar that we did up there on North Avenue. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So, so director, uh, director Betty's gone, but I think that's something that we're talking about doing down on Third Avenue uh, between the front and the water. Yes. All right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Letter dated May 6, 2014, from the Business Administrator, recommending awarding a contract to John J. Riley, Esquire, Greenbaum, Rose Smith, and Davis, LLP, Island, New Jersey, for condemnation counsel, specifically for 601 Bond Street, for the period May 1, 2014, to April 30, 2015, at the rate of $175 per hour, not to exceed $75,000, unless further authorized by your honorable body. Letter dated May 6, 2014 from the business administrator requesting authorization for the proper city officials to enter into an agreement with the Harbor Consultants Inc. Cranford, New Jersey for planning and engineering services to the planning and zoning boards and the Department of Planning and Community Development for the period 2014 through April 30, 2015, at a total cost of $75,000. Um, Bridget, I, I know that uh, Harvard Consultants uh, has been mentioning to me that we have to do a master plan. Yes. Are we ever going to move on that? I have, uh, we have we received proposals, um, and most likely it'll be at the next council meeting. Because it's been one. Mm hmm. We're yeah, it's well. We're, we're required. To do it every five years. Uh, well, we're supposed to match plan every ten years. We have, we're required to re-examine it. Uh, I think every three years throughout that ten-year process. So we're now. It's been ten years, so we need to redo it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Letter dated May 6, 2014 from the Business Administrator requesting authorization for the proper city officials to negotiate and execute a contract with Anlet Computer Services, Red Bank, New Jersey for the purchase of the domain name www.elizabethpd.org and histor historical data including but not limited to archived emails and email addresses in the amount of $5,000. President? Yes, sir. Um, I'm just curious how much like information um, you're looking to acquire when it comes to the emails because five thousand dollars for a domain is a lot of money uh, when you figure like domains usually go for like like ten to fifteen dollars 
Correct. Um, the, the negotiation process that, that is happening uh, with regards to Anlet, Anlet has been administering the uh, website for multiple years now. I don't know the exact number of years. So this is in, um, the 5,000 is not so much to acquire the domain name, but it's also all the rights to the names um, to make sure that it is within un under city control. Because in our existing website, we own the website. In this particular instance, we have it. We've been operating through the vendor. So in an attempt to um, properly manage the overall communications and take municipal control, that's what this process is going for. So the 5,000, um, it does vary on a lot of different levels, but it's the amount of time that's been put in, the amount of information that's been received, and how it's been managed. And how's the traffic for that site? Do we have access to that information? Um, at the curious. moment, um, I don't I don't have the answer to what okay. the current access on the site is. Uh, the goal is, is to be able to buy this site, to take it under city ownership, and then convert it to um, an Elizabeth uh, PDN, you know, or Elizabeth PDNJ, similar to what we have from a municipal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parker. <coughs> Letter dated April 30, 2014 from Chief Financial Officer requesting authorization for the tax collector to credit said individual's taxes entitled to a senior citizen or disability deduction and a veteran deduction for the 2014 tax year as per, de per the delineated list in the of $5,000. Letter dated May 6, 2014 from Chief Financial Officer advising that additional grants may be appropriated in the 2014 state fiscal year budget by Budget Amendments Chapter 159. Mm -hmm. Letter dated May 6, 2014 from Chief Financial Officer advising that transfers for the 2014 state fiscal year municipal and sewer utility budgets may be necessary. Letter dated May 6, 2014 from Chief Financial Officer. Requesting that your honorable body consider authorizing proper city officials to submit a request to the Director, Division of Local Finance to make the appropriate change of title or text of appropriation in the adopted 2014 <coughs> municipal budget to account for the city's restructuring regarding the Department of Neighborhood Services in its entirety, assigning its bureaus to existing departments and amending other portions of the code of the city of Elizabeth accordingly. We're not changing any salaries though. Correct. Um, Letter dated May 6, 2014 from the Chief Financial Officer advising that in compliance with the State Fiscal Year 2014 Appropriations Act requires that the Honorable Body approve all payments related to accumulated uncompensated absence benefits. Letter dated May 6, 2014 from the Chief Financial Officer advising that in compliance with the State Fiscal Year 2014 Appropriations Act it requires that your honorable body review the city's quarterly budget revenues and appropriations for the 2014 state fiscal year third quarter ending March 31st, 2014. And that's for information. All right. Um, I know what I was going to say. Just for me. Did everyone get the um, email about the, um, the, the reporting form? What reporting? You know how we used to have the um, <coughs> financial disclosure form? Oh, no, not yet. Not Anybody else get that? Did we do that a while? Yeah, no, I didn't get it. No, I didn't get it. No, 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 because no. The, the Joanne, Joanne or Joppy, the county clerk, emailed me, and I, what I'll do is I'll forward it to you. Okay. Um, we have to do it online now. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, yeah. yeah. and they did it last year. No, but they've modified different. it. Right. The city clerk, Mr. Perez, she has to submit all the name of the individual that have to do that. Then she has to give us a special pass. I happened to call because I thought I was late. And They've we have time to June until 13. June 13th. Right? They've extended June 13th. I'm going to forward the email I received to you. Okay. But she has to we're enter our name so we could all get a special okay. pass. Oh, okay. okay. I, it just came to my mind. So. Yeah, just that. Just Good point. Okay. But I said yeah. towards the end. Yeah, because usually it's around tax time. Come on, I was nervous. Oh my God, I forgot. And then I called. And then I just said, go for the second. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
It's landline. Letter dated May 6, 2014, from the Chief Financial Officer requesting that your honorable body consider authorizing the acquisition of the Bayway Polish home in the amount of $800,000 with a down payment of $40,000. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I really would like you yeah. Council put this on the agenda and move this forward. As you all know, I've been uh, advocating for and supporting the uh, purchase of the Bailey Polish home so that we can then uh, create some other opportunities for our youth here in the city of Elizabeth. So, if uh, Council will support this, I would appreciate it. Council, yeah. did they resolve whatever environmental issues did? Uh, my understanding is that everything has been resolved. Is yes, it, yes, it has been. Yes, we received back the environmental reports. Um, it That's was why the purchase price is less than it originally started. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'd like to say it's great negotiation, uh, but, uh, but partia partially, yes, uh, that is why it is less. Based on outstanding taxes and also us buying uh, the retiring the liquor license. The license, right. Cool. Mr. President? Yes, sir. First, I just wanted to commend Councilman Nelson Gonzalez for working hard regarding this particular issue. And I'm very happy that he, in fact, uh, responded uh, to needs of the community or were communicated to him. So I'm happy that this is going to be on the agenda. Me too. Mr. Kazimich is a lovely gentleman, but I'm tired of talking about it. <laughs> I, I can say this, and, and I'll say it at, the, at Tuesday night. I mean, I think um, most of uh, most of us on the city council have really taken the concept of providing recreation to our kids in our town really to heart. Um, we've got all kinds of stuff going on in this town, and and I think, to be honest with you, it's my belief that that has indirectly reduced a lot of the crime and stuff. Because these kids are now doing positive stuff and they don't got time to be out there uh, doing shenanigans. So yeah. congratulations, Councilman. Yeah, and well, hopefully uh, we'll continue to move uh, in that direction on this, yeah. on this council. Okay. Letter dated May 5th, 2014 from the city treasurer requesting permission to auction tax sales certificate numbers 2011, 12, and 13 that make up the Chem Control Court site located on South Front Street with a minimum bid amount in total for the three certificates equaling $250,000 at an auction to be held on June 2nd, 2014. Construction of marine equipment. That's who. Um, so in essence, there, it's a tax sale. Correct. Sale. So mm -hmm. the city will receive the 1.6 million that's been out there in Lalo. Mm -hmm. We've never mm -hmm. foreclosed on it because we don't want to take over this property. Correct. That's so you get what they agree. What they have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Understood. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Letter dated May 2nd, 2014 from the Director of Health and Human Services recommending awarding a contract to Visiting Nurse and Health Services, Elizabeth, for the performance of Senior Health Promotion Risk Reduction Services for the period January 1, 2014 through December 31st, 2014 at a rate of $83 per hour, total cost of services for the year is not to exceed $11,952 unless further authorized by your honorable body. And they go to all the senior centers? Yes. Le letter dated May 2nd, 2014 from the Director of Health and Human Services recommending the award of a contract to Visiting Nurse and Health Services Elizabeth for the performance of health educator services for the period January 1, 2014 through December 31st, 2014 at a rate of $73 per hour. Total cost of services for the year is not to exceed $10,840.50 unless further authorized by your honorable body. Any questions? Yes. Okay. You were going to say something? Put it on. Okay. Letter dated May 5th, 2014 from the Director of Health and Human Services requesting permission for the proper city officials to enter into an agreement with American National Red Cross for the use of city-owned facilities as emergency shelters during a disaster. Do they have um, generators? 
Well, no, the buildings that we will be using um, for our shelters, yes, <coughs> will have generators. The, Ameri the agreement with the American Red Cross is to uh, officially allow them to come in with their food and their ancillary services that they provide in our um, in our facilities. So oh. they bring the cots and everything else. Correct. Yeah. Well, doesn't it that's bring a no, but now, but now we can have now we can the have national red cross. The national red cross. Yeah, supplement Letter dated April 25th, 2014 from the Director of Planning and Community Development requesting authorization for the proper city officials to execute any and all documents necessary to discharge the city's second mortgage home rental housing program for visible loan on the property located at 158 First Street, Elizabeth, in the amount of eighteen thousand dollars. Councilman, Letter dated April 30, 2014, from the Director of Planning and Community Development, requesting authorization for the proper city officials to amend the agreement dated October 22nd, 2013, with Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Union County 4-H Youth Program to provide an enriched learning environment for low-moderate income youth in the city, specifically to extend the contract from June 30, 2014 to October 1, 2014 to defray the cost of the part-time workers at the summer camp. Where, where do we run this at? Well, are we, where are we supposed to do this in your ward now? That's I will find out. I think it's... Uh, From Doyle and Third Avenue that we're supposed to do something there? They used to do yeah, it at the Mac building, but I don't think the Mac building's been using it. I'll find out what, um, where the parking lot is. Yeah, I think it's the first one. Yeah, I think I believe it is. The, I think it's actually in, they do programs in multiple wards, but I will find out exactly what centers and where. Thank you. I thought you were going to do that. Uh, there was an a 4-H something going on in that little property there on the corner of Doyle and, uh, Conservancy. Conservancy. That's not part of this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Letter dated May 2nd, 2014, from the Director of Planning and Community Development, requesting authorization for the proper city officials to amend the resolution dated May 28, 2013, authorizing the Urban Enterprise Zone Administrative Budget in the amount of. $220,000 for fiscal year 2013 through 2014, specifically to increase the current urban enterprise zone administrative budget in the amount of $50,000 due to additional operating expense related to the Midtown parking garage that the Elizabeth Development Company has incurred, thereby raising the budget to $270,000. Letter dated April 28, 2014 from the Director of Public Works, requesting authorization for the proper city officials to apply, accept, and sign all appropriate documents for the Transportation Investment Generating Economic Recovery Grant administered by the United States Department of Transportation for the proposed reconstruction of 50 traffic signal systems at intersections throughout the community for an amount not to exceed $22,500,000. What's the reality? Um, Based on uh, recent track records, uh, minimal. <laughs> but um, I think, uh, but uh, but overall, but seriously though, as we've um, designed the program, it is it's in concert with a lot of the goals of the federal transportation industry as far as having automated signals, handicap accessible, and also alternative power. And, if, and so hopefully we have somewhat of a chance to get some money. But, um, Twenty-two million five is the whole package. Right? Correct. We're just right. trying to get the piece of the piece. No, no, we're applying for twenty-three. Yeah, we're applying. Yeah, we're applying, yeah, we're applying for twenty-two in hopes that even if we get a portion of it, because the intersections, as you know, it's four hundred fifty thousand in intersection right. to to make them compliant. Okay. So. Good luck, Mom. Yeah. Hey, gotta try. like the lottery if you don't play mm -hmm. Letter 28, 2014 from the Director of Public Works requesting permission to have liens placed against properties listed on Schedule A attached here too for the removal of ice and snow from said properties in the amount of $1,137.92.
Letter dated May 5th, 2014 from the Director of Public Works, recommending awarding a contract to TNM Associates, Middletown, New Jersey, to provide environmental engineering services for Veterans Memorial Waterfront Park at a cost not to exceed $108,550, 90% percent of the allowable construction costs will be reimbursed by FEMA. This is part of that, those plans that we got. Correct. This is, yeah, this is additional. Um, and it's more money. Yes. More money. It's coming along great. It is. <coughs> if you haven't had a chance, council members, um, take a walk down to that waterfront. They'll allow you in because you're, you're, you're official uh, government official um, the way they're reconstructing the boardwalk is out of this world they got these uh, concrete blocks that they're building up mm -hmm. and then, and then they're, they're, they sit there for a few days and they fill behind them with, with all the uh, fill to protect the, uh, the embankment mm -hmm. and then when it's done they take those blocks away and they move on to the next it's, it's, like, it's, it's impressive the way it's it's just don't fall in because there's no room. <laughs> Along. Letter dated May 5th, 2014 from the Director of Public Works requesting to amend the resolution dated May 24, 2011, authorizing the award of a contract to Johnson, Murmuran, and Thompson, Inc. to provide professional engineering services in connection with road resurfacing and reconstruction in the amount of $94,800 specifically to provide further for design and construction administration of the 2011 road resurfacing program, phase three services at an additional cost, not to exceed $13,000 to be paid from liquidated damages held from the Defino contract for a total contract amount of $107,800. So, uh, yeah, who's paying? It's, it's the, the insurance company. Oh, okay. what, um, is this a list that has already been paved, or is this a list that's going to be paved? Uh, this is a, a, a this is already done. Okay. Right. My understanding, but I'll confirm that. Yes. Okay. Letter date May fifth, two thousand fourteen, from the Director of Public Works. Requesting approval of change order number one to the contract awarded to Tomco Construction Inc. for the Veterans Memorial Waterfront Park rehabilitation at an original cost of $3,421,386 to provide further for damages involving Waterside Ripper app at the bulkhead wall at an additional cost of $124,736.29, raising the amount of the contract to $3,546,000. $122.29. Who's paying it? Uh, FEMA. Oh, it's coming from FEMA? Well, 90%. It says 90% well, okay. of the construction cost is reimbursed by FEMA. The 10%? 10% is Okay, so, so it went from 3 to 4, 3,4 to 3,5. Yes, because when they went in to do the rebuilding of the boardwalk, they realized that the rip, more riprap had been destroyed as a result of Sandy than had originally been expected. Okay. I support the project 100%, but I don't support change. Letter dated May 5th, 2014, from the Director of Public Works, recommending awarding the contract to TNM Associates, Middletown, New Jersey, to provide civil. Yes. Civil and environmental engineering on call services on a time and material basis, not to exceed ninety-five thousand dollars plus reimbursable. Letter dated May 6, 2014, from the Director of Public Works, recommending awarding a contract to Hatch Mop McDonald, Islin, New Jersey, to provide professional and engineering services in connection with the design, bidding, and construction phases. Due to Hurricane Sandy and mitigation repairs to combine sewer overflow netting facilities, Trenton Avenue, Kepkowski Road, and Matana Park pump stations at a cost not to exceed $148,000. Yeah. Letter dated April 28th. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Can we get any FEMA money for this? Um, yes. Is that part of our work? Correct. Yes. Is it uh, right on the, on the bottom of paragraph 4? 
Is that where it's coming from? Yeah, it says raising intake chambers, 90% of the allowable cost will be reimbursed by FEMA. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Sorry, I didn't read that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Again. Letter dated April 28, 2014 from the police director <coughs> requesting permission to establish handicapped parking spaces at the following location. Sixth Ward, 611 Norwood Terrace. Hallelujah, put them on. <laughs> Second Ward, 636 Maple Avenue. Fifth Ward, 615 Court Street. Second Ward, 618 Myrtle Street. Fifth Ward, 809 Adams Avenue. Okay, deletions, 43 Orchard Street. We had another deletion, I don't know if the police department's been out there yet, but 122 South Park Street, the gentleman's moved into a senior building. All right. And came in to me to see me in my office and tell me what's going on. Which is a great message for the public at home. If, if you have a handicapped parking space and you move, make sure you notify us, because that handicap spot has to be removed. On your street. Demanda, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Can we ever remove also Mr. Pfeiffer on 310 Christine Street? Good. Well, uh, the, the wife, uh, she passed away and is in a nursing home, so, you know. There's no cars going into that parking space. That's what I mean, so we better use because I have a hard time finding a parking space around the corner. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Letter dated April 22nd, 2014 from the Elizabeth Avenue Partnership uh, is requesting permission to host four sidewalk sales on Elizabeth Avenue on the following dates. May 15, 16, 17, June 12, 13, 14, August 21st, 22nd, 23rd, September 25th, 26th, 27th, with rain dates of May 22nd, 23rd, 24th, June 19, 2021. Uh, an error was made on your letter. He repeated um, sidewalk dates, but he actually needed August 28, 29, and 30. Following week. Right. And also October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Letter dated April 24, 2014 from Eddie G. Productions in the Merchants of Morris Avenue requesting permission to host the 11th Annual Columbian Independence Day Festival on Sunday, July 20, 2014 with the rain date of July 27, 2014 on Morris Avenue from Sayre Street to Julian Place and Westfield Avenue between North Broad Street and Harrison Street from noon to 9 p.m. Yes. Um, I know. Um, pretty much the two, two, the two things I wanted to look into was how uh, the letter was submitted last year because I know here uh, it's Eddie Productions. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, personally, the two things I'm concerned about is making sure that the Morris Avenue business uh, merchants are on board um, fully because it, it appears it's more Eddie G. Productions. But the second thing is that, um, I mean, I think it's a great event uh, as long as it's focused on celebrating you know, the culture and the Columbia on culture. But I know last year we had some serious problems too. Oh my gosh. Um, so I do agree with Councilman that it could be um, held until we're able to make sure that certain things are in place to make sure that we don't have some of the issues we had last time. Um, there is the possibility we could get some answers for by the time we have our next meeting, though. Oh, this, um, is, this is not happening until July. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I just want to piggyback on that. Hey, can, Bridget, can you find out from the police department? I'd like to know what, if any, incidents occurred last year. I've gotten a, a lady actually came up to me and said to me that they were they were doing the uh, shots, you know, when you walk into yeah. your mouth, mouth shots. Yeah. And, and, they, and by, if you're doing that, you're not checking IDs. So I'm um, concerned with, with those things going on because I feel like the kids taking advantage of. 
Um, but and I, but I, was, I don't know if that was an incident that rose to the level of the police intervention. Okay. I don't know, but, but I'd like to know what these. I can certainly ask the police and also ask if there's mechanisms upon the individuals entering the festival, if they could be given, I don't know, ID. Sometimes, you know, if you're in a controlled environment, I don't know. No, it's just, it's, it's too many people. Yeah. yeah. It's like a festival gone wild. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what All right, so we'll hold this up, Councilman. Okay. Letter dated April 30, 2014, from the City Treasurer, submitting the Treasurer's report of receipts and disbursements for the month of December 2013 and statement of bank balances and investments as of December 31st, 2013. A memorial has been requested for uh, Ms. Nancy DeMarco, her Councilman Gonzalez. And that's it. Okay. No long night. Yes, Ms. President. Councilman, uh, as he used up all of his time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we're going to have a very quick once around. Uh, all right, very quick. quick. Council well, will be okay, against okay, it. Not fine. <laughs> <laughs> she passes. Okay, so the the first, so. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, okay. Mr. President, can we find the recycling um, on the 300 block, my district, which is 1 8? I had the opportunity to walk there today, and basically, the recycling is not being picked up on a 300 block of our district 1A. 300 and block of? Of all the of streets. Of all the streets, okay. Well, no, it's basically uh, Broadway, South Park, Magnolia, and Bond. So all the ones awesome. are the dead end. Okay. So if we could um, maybe get uh, regional uh, supervisors to, uh, to make sure that that gets addressed, please. And I'm yes. going to piggyback off the president. Uh, last week we had a, a severe uh, rainstorm, and I know the phase we didn't finish phase two with the uh, with the uh, public works, but the same thing with the detention base for the lines. And they're, they're possible. I know we found a location on South Second and Third Ave. Can you look into the we could uh, put maybe a detention base there to, to take up that, some of that water? This is the property that the city is foreclosing upon. Okay. Um, I think we haven't finally taken over that property yet, but maybe before we put it out to auction, there might be a way to... Uh, Absolutely. If, if that other phase is not going to happen from the DP, because I know it's, there's an argument, wetlands, not wetlands. Mm -hmm. This might be an alternative. Yep. I have Yolanda, I have two accommodations. Uh, Ms. Diane Leverett Dully and Thelma Williams. And who's the other one? Uh, Thelma Williams. Thelma? Yes, uh, they actually put a, uh, a group together for an MS walk. And uh, I was I probably participated in this. Over 70 people that, that made a donation to help uh, uh, Mm -hmm. individuals with eminence. And the second one was the, the Puerto Rican Society of Elizabeth, Puerto Rican Society of Club Elizabeth, for their great work with, you know, with teaching the kids the culture and uh, the history of uh, Puerto Rico. And then last but not least, I have a memorial for Mr. Charles Smith. Charles Smith. Taylor, I'm sorry, Charles, Charles Taylor. Taylor. That's it, Mr. President. Before, um, before I, 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 I'm glad you mentioned a couple things. Um, we need accommodation for Ann Estabrook. And also, I don't know if you all are aware of this, but on Friday there's going to be a luncheon um, where some of our uniformed uh, officers are being honored by the uh, 200 um, Valor, Valor Awards. There's the Valor Award luncheon at the uh, LaFerre and, and uh, Route 22. Okay. I got it. I got it, Mike. It's um, Firefighter Sean Horton. Firefighter Patrick Workus. And Police Detective Raymond Smith. One of the three uh, from our town. Um, if you've never been to one of these uh, 200... Uh, 
Fowler Ward, I uh, lunch is a very nice uh, ceremony. That they, pick, they have a couple officers and firefighters from other towns, and they're, they're recognized for some great events that they did in, throughout the year. Actually, I went to one uh, where Bill Reyes and Stephen Ronaldi were uh, recognized for uh, their assistance with Mr. Salco, uh, Capo. And, 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 and the fire department. That was last year. Also. Last year's. Mm -hmm. No, that was just a couple weeks ago. No, but that was for an incident that occurred last year. Sierra should have been the one recognized. Councilman Keenan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking time. about uh, Fireman Patrick. There were Marcus. multiple people that were on oh. uh, There was a very nice article in the Star Legend this past week about his uh, heroic behavior in saving the life of, uh, I believe it was a young man. Um, a couple of other names were mentioned in that article, so I, I'd like to make sure that they're um, that they're included in the uh, uh, commendation. Well, what I'd like to do, and, and if you can get yeah. those names over to Elon. Well, did you see the article? Um, it was in which page? Star Ledger. Star Ledger. Okay. Uh, I'll email you the link tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. But what I what I'd like to do is I'm not going to bring these commendations to the luncheon because they they're going to get recognized. Yeah. What I want to do is um, once they're ready on it, mm -hmm. I'd like to get these three gentlemen and, and the other ones that the council is going to bring to your attention. Okay. Um, try to get them up to one of our council meetings over the next uh, few weeks. Okay. All right. Great. That's all. Thank you. I think that's a better way to do it. It'll be a, a presentation, a private one, just from us. Makes sense. As opposed to. Uh, Councilman Goldman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Bridget, would you check and find out what's going on with the uh, backup generators for, uh, I know we was, uh, I think we was awarded um, uh, some uh, that money. Yes, we are waiting for uh, approval from uh, FEMA. We have all the specs and everything's prepared to go. Once the money is released, then the generators will be <coughs> purchased and uh, installed. Because I don't, is there a time, limit of time frame before we have to use that money? Okay. Um, the money usually does come with with a time frame, but at this point, we've submitted all of our paperwork to uh, to FEMA, which they've given us a green light on. We're just waiting for the final release and the uh, of the funding. So I will certainly get back to you would with you as definitive a date as we have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Mr. President. Also, uh, Yolanda, I'd like to send a letter over to the police department requesting a uh, a uh, four way stops uh, survey study on the corner of Lina and uh, Jefferson Avenue, please. Okay. Uh, cause uh, there's a uh, great need in that area for the people are speeding quite a bit. Was it a line? You, you sure it was a line? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, line in uh, Jefferson. Jefferson. Yes. Uh, uh, also, uh, Mr. President, I believe this weekend uh, the Portuguese are having a fishing derby uh, at Warnica Park. Uh, all kids 17 years of age and under. Uh, he just started at 9 o'clock. Uh, you know, come in, come with your fishing pole if you have them. If not, come anyway. Try to fish. <coughs> they will supply fish. Uh, fish. Uh, so fish we, we can't go. <laughs> you can get fish, but yeah, you're not going to be entitled to get all. Just can't win the prize. So, prize. Okay. so I urge, I urge everyone to make sure that they support this because I think it was stopped a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and right now they start to pick it up again. So right I thing, think yeah. I urge everybody to cool. tell the kids, uh, yeah. so they can support this uh, event. Well, what, what happened? I'm glad, glad you brought that up, Council. What happened was. Uh, <laughs> For a while, the uh, Elizabeth Police Department uh, and the union was supporting uh, with the fishing rods and all that stuff. Right. And I think then when they had that audit, this was one of the things that uh, they were told they couldn't do. Right. So the Portugal Day Committee has stepped in and continued it this year, and we're we're actually picking up the, the cost. So it's open to any kid in the city that wants to come down. Registration is at nine o'clock in the morning, right. and it goes until noon. Correct. So it starts at nine o'clock at noon. Nine to noon. And 17 years of age and under. Yeah, the younger, little kids. Yeah, yeah little kids. But right in there, last year. Last year. Yeah, you did have it. Yeah, yeah. last year. Yeah. That was only nine to noon. Yeah, yeah. yeah nine to noon, yes. Uh, I think that's all I had, Mr. President. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Councilman yeah. Mazza. Uh, That's it, you're done. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Now I'm going to take a 15 minutes time. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bill, do you remember when we discussed about the water and liberty and, and the subject that we actually went on in the last session this evening? You said that if there was any questions, either to call you or to communicate with the right people, right? 
Okay, well, that's what I was asking Yolanda. And the truth always prevails. This was a question direct to come up with some answer to the councilman. You direct us to do that. According to Tony Zingaro, the City of Liberty Water, Papier Company, and blah, 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 are still in litigation, and he cannot provide you any information at this time. Mr. President, this might be subject to closed session. Yeah, why would you yeah. But it's, it's not, I'm not even divulge of anything. You just yeah. said that. I'm just saying that we were supposed to communicate and get the answer on whatever. The answer was given to me tonight after I asked, but this is something that we were supposed to communicate. Councilman, you. would you mind bringing that to the councilor's attention after me? I'll be I'm happy fine. to answer. I, That's okay. If I'm no, no, no. I don't want you. To I'm do not it. divulging any information. What okay. I'm saying. I didn't get your questions. Okay, so then I'll you, talk to you privately. Had I, had I gotten your questions, I would have responded, but I did not get the questions. No, no, I went to somebody else in which the person declined to answer because. Anything else, Councilman? Uh, I'll have a two memorial. I don't know why certain people can't understand, but unfortunately, God always prevails. Of course. And everything will come up on the top. Anybody, anybody that's empty will float on the top of the water, so keep floating. Rosa Nigro passed away, I'd like to have a memorial, yeah. and Rocky Nader, uh, memorial. So. Rosa Nigro, <laughs> Rocky what? Uh, Rocky Nader passed away. Netta. Netta, N-E-T-T-A, <laughs> and Rosa Nigro, N-I-G-R-O, like to memorial. Yeah. And I'll ask those questions privately. Now the question. All right, Mr. President, I'd like to know, as you know, I've uh, talked about this many times, but just to give you the latest update, I want everyone to know that this year's scholarship program was the first time that was uh, completely sold out, like two weeks in advance. Uh, we raised more than $45,000. Oh, wow. And I thank each and every one of you who participated, attended, helped in one way or another. Some of you gave me advice as to how to reach uh, several corporations, and I was able to do that. And I'm happy to report that I have already committed, oh, not I, but several uh, corporations and individuals have already committed thousands of dollars oh, for next nice. year's program. So I, I'm really excited about that. And I want to thank you for all your support. Oh, really? Good, Good, Good job. Good job. Next year, you know what we're going to do? We're going to rent out all of Warren Anchor Park. We're going to have it. We're going to have 100,000 kids getting there. Go ahead. Councilman right. Stane. Um, I, I just have one item. It's something that's um, a huge concern and is trolling. Is on Saturday, um, April 26th, the firehouse engine 7 was closed because they didn't have enough um, people to man the engine, just for that one day. Um, but of course, whenever an engine is closed, it impacts the, the neighborhood. Um, and my biggest thing is that I, I was told it was um, simply because they didn't want to do like give overtime to make making sure that that engine is able to operate. Um, so I just wanted to bring it up to everyone's attention because this impacts every ward, everyone in the city. Um, so if if a letter could be sent out um, to the fire department, just you know, for them to do everything possible not to close an engine. Um, from what I was told, it was just I think they were just one person short. Richard, there's got to be way to ninety thousand dollars overtime, Mr. President. They should have used the overtime and keep it. Uh, open. If, if it's just one man. Yeah, one minute. I will certainly review and speak to the fire director and fire chief with regards to proper protocol and what we can do to ensure I mean, that. Yeah, I know that there's, there, there's, we're trying to save money and we're, we're on strict orders about that overtime, but if it's just, you know, maybe they have to have a little bit of discretion. No, I will certainly again discuss with the director and the chief um, what protocols we can put in place to no, minimize you. this, if not negate it. Um, it was Saturday, April 26th, just for you to gotcha. check. Thank you. And it was Engine 7. Engine 7. Now, is there you. a ladder company in that? house or the house itself was um what i was told it was pretty much the engine the engine yeah because sometimes the engine, that yeah. the engine is shot with the ladders there and the yeah. hose there are other firemen so the firehouse was active and manned it was just yeah. this particular engine but i'll confirm yeah, all that you confirm. and work thank you make sure yes that's it mr president thank you councilman gonzalez yeah, mr president just wanted to mention that the memorial that i requested for nancy the marco for those who aren't aware was the mother of uh, marie and Phyllis from Joanne's Luncheonette, mm -hmm. who passed away recently. Mm -hmm. That's what's the present. All right. This is probably my longest meeting of the year so far. Yeah, let's go. Motion to adjourn. Let's dive. Let's cut some time. You're losing it. Let's start.